What is up everyone, it is Sacred Saiyan here, welcoming you to the 10th episode of What if Sacred Saiyan was in Dragon Ball? If you end up liking today's video, then please consider subscribing. It is free, and you can always unsubscribe later. There's a link in the description of the video from my Discord server, and also to become a channel member if you want to support the channel. The highest channel member tier is Royal Blue, so if you want to support me, then that is definitely the best way to do so. And with all that out of the way, let's get into the 10th episode of what if Sacred Saiyan was in Dragon Ball? The last video ended off in the future timeline, with me killing Vegeta Black and deciding it is finally time to enact my plan. I walk over to the scorched remains of Vegeta Black and pick up his time ring, placing it on my finger under my glove. And then, I use instant transmission to teleport to planet Namek. Once I arrive, I meet up with the Elder Mori and request he use his planet's Dragon Balls. Since I helped save their entire race in the past, he happily accepts, and once the Dragon Balls are gathered, he asks me what I wish for. My one and only wish is to be transported to Planet Serial. I don't need the other two. Elder Mori speaks to Paranga, and the wish is granted. And then, I appear on Planet Serial. Now on Planet Serial, I quickly scour the planet for the two Dragon Balls, and after summoning the dragon, I wish to become immortal. I knew the Namekians would have never granted that wish, so I thought I'd use the Cerulean Dragon Balls instead. Once the wish is granted, I then hit myself with a clothing beam, giving myself a darker outfit, and then I teleport to the world of the Kais, eliminating Shin, which in turn kills Beerus, and then I teleport to Earth. Once I arrive, the future Z fighters sense my energy and all fly in. Future Goku, future Gohan, future Trunks, Future Vegeta and Future Piccolo all show up. Even the future human fighters arrive on the scene. Future Gohan flies up to me, asking what happened to me, but I say that I'm not who he believes I am. Gohan is confused, but I then kick him into a building. All the Z fighters looking in shock, as Goku and Vegeta both power up into Super Saiyan Blue, and Future Trunks does the same. All the future Z fighters had defeated Majin Buu, and eventually Beerus came, and they trained under him and Whis. But now, the gods are no longer there to help them. The three Saiyan warriors all rush at me at once, but in base form, I dodge all of their attacks, grabbing Goku's fist and snapping his arm, before I throw him into Vegeta, and when Trunks tries to land a kick on my jaw, I simply let him, and Trunks is terrified, as I am completely unfazed. I then proceed to hit Trunks in the stomach with a key blast, and he is sent into another building. Piccolo is about to try to join the fight, but my glare alone paralyzes the Namekian, and I then raise an arm into the air, creating a giant ball of energy and Goku quickly flies towards the Z fighters and uses instant transmission, teleporting them all away, as I throw the ball at the city and erase it off the face of the earth. The Z fighters are panicking, not sure what is happening. Is that really sacred? It can't be. Bomber is trying to get in contact with Whis, but there is no response, and even though reluctant, future Gohan has an idea. There is only one person who may both know what is going on and defeat whoever this is. Everyone instantly knows what he's on about and all think they should do it immediately, but future Gohan isn't sure they can trust him. Goku tells his son that it's their only option, and even though he knows what Gohan thinks, Sacred isn't a bad person. Future Gohan looks away, and Bulma says that they have a problem, as she pulls up her security footage, and they see me floating in the air above Capsule Corp. Goku and Vegeta say that they'll distract the guy that looks like Sacred, while Trunks and Gohan go back into the past. Trunks agrees, and so does Gohan. So reluctantly, while Goku and Vegeta fly outside in Super Saiyan Blue, Trunks and Gohan return to the past. In the present timeline, I'm on Earth, taking a break from my intense training with Beerus, and Goku and Gohan are cheering me on as me and Broly are arm wrestling. Broly is in his full power Super Saiyan form, while I'm in Super Saiyan Blue. We seem to be evenly matched, but gradually, Broly is overpowering me, and wins the arm wrestling match. Me and Broly then return to our base forms, fist pumping, and then, I sense the arrival of future Gohan and future Trunks. Gohan and Trunks then exit the time machine, and I immediately think I know what is going on. Once they begin explaining the situation, my belief is even further true. I told them about Zamasu, and how he must have taken over a version of my body. But that still doesn't explain where my future self is, unless it was his body which Zamasu took over. Either way, I need to go with them to help them. So I enter the time machine, and then Goku and Vegeta squeeze in as well with Broly and present Gohan holding onto the outside as we teleport to the future. We arrive in a recently destroyed capsule corp, 
and I see Sacred Black floating there, holding the heavily injured future Goku and Vegeta by the throat, and he then drops them as he sees our arrival. Sacred Black then smirks, activating corrupted Super Saiyan God, and then rifts in the sky up here, with clones of him coming out. I tell Broly to quickly go and heal the future Goku and Vegeta, so they can all work together to fend off the clones. I'll handle the real deal. I then fly towards Sacred Black, grabbing him as I fly to a desolate city, and attempt to punch Sacred Black, but he catches my punch, and then headbutts me before kicking me back. I smirk, cracking my knuckles, and saying that this isn't going to end well with Zamasu. Sacred Black laughs. You really fell for the bait, didn't you? He really believed I was Zamasu. No, I am future you. Though, you can now call me cursed. I have a shocked expression on my face. What? No. I could never become a villain. No version of me. Why would you become this? What is wrong with you? Cursed Saiyan's expression changes to one of hate. Save your breath, because in my eyes, you are the villain. You're so caught up in your blissfully ignorant ideals that you've become blind to the truth. You were forgiven for the so-called sin of keeping our knowledge hidden. But me? I was shunned. Exiled from my home, my friends, no, my family, betrayed me. So try to stop me if you wish, but don't confuse your naivety for heroics, because I am the victim. I stand defiantly. Maybe you're right. I don't know what you've been through, but we both know I've been through more than most people as well. Yet I'm standing here, still trying to save everyone, when nobody's ever even thought that I may need saving too. I know you're hurt, but you have to stop this. Think of all the innocent people you're hurting. Cursed Saiyan's face becomes even more enraged. Think of the people? <laughs> Why would I think of the people when they have never once thought of me? They left me to rot when I needed them most. They turned a blind eye and allowed my hatred to fester, my mind to twist for years. So now, when I try to think of the people, all I can think of is how to make them feel the way that I did. My expression becomes more sad. This isn't you. This isn't who we are. I point at myself. This is who we are. This is who I am. And if you think I won't stop you, then you need to think again. I will help you see. I won't give up on you. I get into my fighting stance, and Curse begins to chuckle maniacally. You know, bravery often overlaps with stupidity. Coming here was certainly a bit of both. Nonetheless, I'm intrigued. So show me how you will save me. Curse and I then rush at each other with a measurable speed, clashing blow for blow, but Black has the edge, and is pushing me back. I am alone in this world. Bobbidi allowed me to turn my depression into rage before I slaughtered him, and now I will do the same to you. Cursed and I continue to trade blows, but I begin to gain the advantage. You aren't alone. You are loved. Your desire for vengeance isn't needed. Cursed and powers up a Kamehameha. It is more than a desire. It is a necessity, an aching, gnawing sensation that slowly consumes my every thought. You can't change what is set in stone. I power up a Kamehameha. Your words are shrouding how you truly feel. I know how much you are hurting inside, and I won't let you hurt alone. We both fire our Kamehamehas. The beams clashing, and the Z fighters who are fighting the clones all turn to our direction in shock at the power. I shout to myself, Your friends care about you! Gohan, although reluctant to admit it, regrets what he did, and the others never agreed with the decision in the first place. They try to search for you, but you hid your key. Curse shouts back. I have no friends. They only take and take until I have nothing left. And then they ask me for more. Our beams disperse as I appear in front of Cursed, hugging him. As I say, you have to let me in. We've been through so much. Don't let this be the thing that destroys you. Curse then lets out a tear. I don't know if I could put myself back together this time. As he stabs me through the chest with a keyblade and throws me to the ground. Kirsten flies back to the main group as I lay on the ground in immense pain. I don't know what to do. Is this what bottling everything up does to me? Is this what doing everything alone causes? The Z fighters are barely holding off the clones when the real Kirst arrives and begins to beat on the Z fighters one by one. You are no more significant than insects to me. I was once burdened by morality like you all, but no longer. Kirst is about to slice Broly in half, but I appear catching the keyblade in between my hands before snapping it, and then grabbing onto Cursed and throwing him a long distance away as I chase after him. You have to stop this now! But Cursed just begins rambling. All it took was one stupid mistake for them to hate me, and that's when I realised that it was never love that they had. 
behind their smiles and cheers. It was always fear. They tried to hide it, but they're scared of people like us. And they should be, because you and I are different. We are stronger. We are better. Kirsten tries to hit me by transforming to Ultra Ego and catch the punch. So, you're telling me the love you felt for those you cared about is just gone? Because I don't believe that. And I don't think you believe that either. No matter what we went through when we were kids. The repeated heartbreak, the trauma, the isolation, overthinking. We still could never get rid of the immense love we felt for others, no matter how much it hurt us. And even since then, you lost all your friends and you blamed yourself. But deep down, we are both still that kid who just wants to be loved. Cursed eyes widen as he remembers everything which he long since repressed. Cursed clones disappear just as they are about to kill the Z Fighters. And me and Cursed slowly float down to the floor. Cursed, full of tears, mutters, what have I done? What have I become? I go in for a hug again. You became what either of us could have became a very long time ago. You just needed a reminder of who you once were to bring you back into the light. All the Z Fighters land near us, and Cursed looks at them with sorrow. Out of all of them, Future Gohan is the one he walks over. And as I let go of Cursed, him and Future Gohan look at each other. Cursed is about to say that he's sorry, but before he can, Future Gohan hugs him, and apologises for making him suffer the way he did. He was just so frustrated. Cursed hugs Gohan back, and both Future Goku and Present Goku give a thumbs up, while both versions of Vegeta look away with slight smirks and present Gohan and future Trunks are cheerfully grinning while holding Broly up. The fighters then look around, as all the damage done was restored by the Dragon Balls, which future Bulma just used. And Cursed asks what happens now, and future Gohan says that now, Sacred comes home. Future Sacred's outfit and aura return to normal, as he walks up to me and fist pumps me, thanking me for reminding him. I tell him not to mention it, and I hope that next time I see him, it'll be for better circumstances. Future Sacred nods, as me and the rest of the present crew get into the time machine, and wave goodbye as we return to our timeline. And with that, we are going to end off this part. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, then make sure to like, comment, and please do subscribe. It is quick and easy to do. Also, I want to give a huge thank you to Slick Piccolo, Voldemir Garcia, All Might, Camo Ren, and Jonathan Way for becoming channel members. If you want to be shouted out at the end of a video and get other perks like the channel members here, then there is a link in the description down below to become a channel member. It greatly supports me and it helps me immensely. With all of that out of the way, hope to see you all in the next episode of What If Sacred Saiyan Was in Dragon Ball.